If you're with me, shout it loud, amen. amen. All right. Are you ready for the next surprise? God Almighty does not have authority. God cannot have authority. The nature of authority is that someone higher than you must confide upon you. Listen carefully. God does not have authority. The law of authority is that you must be under authority to have authority. The centurion said, for I am a man under authority. And then I also have other people under me. On the strength of that law, I say to one, go. And he goeth. If God has authority, there must be someone he must be obedient to. And he, there must be someone he must worship. There are certain things God cannot do. For instance, he cannot be obedient. It is not in his character. Who will he obey? Are you learning now? Because there are many believers who want the realm of the spirit to respect them. And with this maze of misinformation and confusion, we speak to demons and we hope that they listen. We speak to situations and circumstances. No. The power of God is administered upon the strength of knowledge. God does not have authority. He only gives authority. Are we learning? God Almighty does not have authority. Ladies and gentlemen, he only gives authority. The law of authority, I, I, I told you earlier on, is that there must be someone higher than you who gives you that authority and supervises your compliance. Every time you give authority to someone lower than you, automatically you have the power to supervise their compliance. If they default, you withdraw it. Hallelujah. Isaiah 40, my goodness. Now you will worship him with understanding. The one who only has power with no authority. Isaiah 40, 14. Isaiah 40, 14. With whom did he take counsel? And who instructed him? Who taught him in the path of justice? Who taught him knowledge? And who showed him the way of understanding? There is no one. This is how great God is. That he does not have the ability to obey. And he does not have the ability to have authority. It cannot be. He searched for a man greater than him. He was willing to humble himself to such a God if there were any. And not finding any, he swore by himself. That by this too immutable counsel, it is impossible for God to lie. Do you know what that means? If God says I will bless you, there is no other force that threatens that word. Listen, let me teach you something about authority. In the court, we have customary court. We have high court. Am I right on that? And they all have jurisdictions. Have you seen that there are certain courts that cannot pass certain, uh, what do we call it now? Talk to me, lawyers. They can't pass certain judgments because they say it is beyond their jurisdiction. They have authority, but it must be supervised. The highest of them in any nation is called the Supreme Court. Am I right on that? And when the Supreme Court makes a statement, whether you agree or not, as far as that jurisdiction is concerned, it is over. Hmm. So I can say, I want to bless you. But if someone higher than me, perhaps the one who gave me the legitimacy to use that power refuses, I become helpless even though I am sincere. So when God speaks, what makes his word powerful is not just that he is God, it's because he's the only one. Are we learning now? Can we pray in the spirit for one minute? We are redefining things. For someone, God is already giving you understanding. Hallelujah. Are we together now? So let's recap on everything we've said. We define power. We define authority. We define jurisdiction. And now we're establishing a few things that will guide our understanding. That man does not have absolute power. Only God has absolute power and is the exclusive owner. He was not given. He is the owner. I have spoken once. And twice have you heard that power. That includes the power that is used by witchcraft and all of that. <laughs> you just listen. 
God operates, the power of God operates at three levels. I don't have the time. The highest dimension of his power is derived through intimacy. Are we together? You will have to encounter God directly by his spirit to have that dimension of power. The second level of God's power is hidden in principles. You don't need a relationship to activate that dimension. You only need knowledge. So you can reject God as a person and refuse intimacy with him. But understand the principles. Are we together now? It was designed to be activated the moment the laws are adhered to. Regardless of relationships. That is the dimension where demonic forces and they only manipulate the laws of the spirit there is already a default manifestation of power it is an abuse of power the third dimension of power happens through covenant alignment you don't have to be powerful you just need to believe and connect to the one who has power are we together are we learning now so if you ever see whether it is the power used in occultism whether it's the power used in any, provided you see anything that can tame creation, it is power. It belongs to God, even though it was abused. If someone steals your money and drinks with it, you are not a drunkard. It's your money, but it was abused. But it does not stop the fact that it was your money that was stolen. Am I right on that? Yes. So just because it is God's power being abused does not mean it is not his power. It is his power. It is only that it's been abused. Because one day he will withdraw it. If it was not his power, he would not have the right to withdraw it. Is it not in your Bible that Satan, hell, the grave, all will be cast into the lake of fire? Who then withdraws their power? Even the spirit said, have you come to destroy us before our time? They are aware that there's one, the owner. The earth is the Lord's. The fullness. That means everything that finds itself in the earth belongs to him. The walls and then they. He didn't say the men that dwell there. Whoever is in the earth is still God's property. And one day he will show his absolute owner. Are we learning? I assume that your quietness means you are learning. <laughs> it's amazing how believers want to walk in power but remain in ignorance. Just learning already that God does not have authority gives it, builds your faith. Nobody confers it upon him. So when God speaks, that's like the Supreme Court saying done. Every other court has to bow. That is the power in his word. If there were many gods and he was just the greatest, there would be trouble. If there were many gods equal to him and he's just the wisest out of them, there would be trouble. But there is none in his class. Are we together? Every once in a while we had kings upon the earth who made themselves gods. We had all kinds of demons who deceived people that they were God. And usually it is God's system that all through history a time will come where he will shout from heaven and remind people. For instance, Nebuchadnezzar, when he turns him to become an animal still with the brain of a man, it is to make a statement that there is a God that rules over the affairs of men. I'm saying that because everything God has said to you that you are wondering will it come to pass that means you are saying there is a power higher than him that may stop it no the moment you believe that God's word does not come to pass I personally consider it sin against God you are saying he lied that he does not possess authority let God be true and all men liars now to walk in dominion you must have both power and authority now you understand what i'm saying that to walk in dominion the force to create that compliance whether economic power in this case spiritual power you must do you know that the money in your pocket is nigeria's property hello you've forgotten let me remind you that the money in your pocket and the one in your bank provided you are holding paper it is written there it does not belong to you you are using it but it is Nigeria's property amazing how this thing works the land that you are building on you bought it but in truth based on an agreement you are not even aware of because you were too happy to read and you just signed it it says after 99 years they hope that you'll be dead by then 
the devil is a liar you will live long say amen, amen. shout a louder amen, amen. Yeah. <laughs> so to walk in dominion you must need power and authority luke 10 19 you will understand that statement now luke chapter 10 and verse 19 my spiritual life changed when i understood the things that i'm sharing with you and believe me when it comes to this subject of power i know something a bit about it may not know everything but there are a few things we know hallelujah the bible says behold i give you now even new king james does not get it right the only version that really gets what jesus said is amplified give us amplified king james says power new king james says authority i respect them but both of them are wrong this is what jesus said behold i have given you authority and power to trample upon serpents and scorpions do you notice that the moment he mentioned authority jurisdiction came he defined what you are to have authority over this is a law that was respected right from genesis 1 28 the moment god gives men authority let them have dominion he did not stop there over and he defined everything you should have dominion over behold i give you authority and i give you power are we together and he says on account of that nothing when you understand that you have authority and you have power nothing shall by any means hurt you this is profound so we know from scripture that man has been given power and with power he's been given authority do you know why authority is important because there is a god god in heaven higher than you who supervises your administration of that power and supervises the obedience of creation while you administer that power so if i tell one go and it does not go it is not my responsibility to defend that statement the power was received the authority was conferred the owner of the power and the one who gave me the authority will have to defend his name as touching that disobedience when you understand this your ego gets out of the way because it is god's business to bring confirmation are we learning now otherwise how will you ever stand before a dead body and ask it to come back to life have you ever stood before a dead body that did not move honestly that's when you will know that god was wise to say get out of the way and allow me the, to be the one who confirms the word there are cases that when you see humanly speaking health issues economic situations using the lens of a man you would not even want to dare those things because you will be embarrassing yourself and creating a negative memorial forever people will remember you and say no this person you are as powerless as whatever but what gives you the audacity is that i have power i have authority and there is one who stands behind me as a mighty terrible one authority hallelujah what were we given authority over let me talk a bit about jurisdiction and then we'll pray genesis 1 28 you need to study the jurisdiction for the administration of your power the power